So yeah, this is a, it's a, uh, it's a big superstructure actually, as opposed to just a head. Um, and uh, it has a lot of interesting features that are, that are cool. We have, uh, we have um, pretty rich metallic materials. Um, we have HDR lighting and tone mapping, um, cinematic effects like um, with like uh, lens flares, bloom. Now show them what global illumination and HDR means. Sure, Can you do yeah. that? Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, so it, do you guys know what HDR means? High dynamic range, your eyes could see much, much larger dynamic range than a computer monitor 16 bits per pixel can render, okay? And so the, the, the way that we solve this problem, the way that we solve this problem is we render to a much larger dynamic range inside the graphics processor, okay? Then we do essentially a tone map, a histogram of all of the tones in the scene. And we figure out where the tones are and we remap that tone into a smaller color space. And as a result, we retain the, uh, the large distributions of the large contrasts. The deep darks and the bright whites are retained, but we lose, we change the, we retone, retone map, remap, if you will, um, the rest of the dynamic range to fit back into that of a computer monitor. Yeah, and you can see that as you, uh, as you go down, so like behind this building, as you, uh, you see that it's pretty dark, right? But then as you zoom in, and you cover up you know, th the sky, which is very bright, you start to see more detail that's in the previous dark area, like in when your eyes adapt you know, to the brightness of the scene. But then as you, as, as you go up and you expose more of the sun, you'll see that it also you know, it adjusts to allow you to see the sky, which you know, relative to the back of the building is very bright. Um, yeah. Did you uh, show us what global, global illumination and HDR turned off would look like? Yeah, definitely. So, um, sort of rendering this with, uh, with what it looks like using OpenGL ES3. Um, so this looks like a computer graphics game today? Uh, yeah, I mean. Right? Yeah. Not with this many geometry. I mean, this is still rich with, with polygons, but without global illumination, without high dynamic range, this is what your, what your games would look like. And let's turn it back on. It's almost a Okay, so, so that's um, special effects, but, but um, uh, the, world, the world is not always so peaceful, right? I mean, sometimes there's astronomic events. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, you know what? S could happen, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So uh, we have a pretty cool bullet time effect here where you can sort of pan around and see all the volumetric um, uh, you know, explosions, particles, um, debris. Uh, we're using uh, compute shaders to compute, um, you know, the, the movement of things and the, the particle effects that happen. And so what's happening here is that Lucas is using the Tegra K1's yeah. 192 parallel cores to do physics processing. This is the same physics processing that supercomputers use for fluid dynamics, for nanomolecular dynamics, for particle simulations, for astrophysics. It's exactly the same architecture, exactly the same type of program. Now it's running on 192 cores on the Tegra K1. Okay, you're, all right, you can play by yourself on the side there. Let's, uh, let's keep moving. 